The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. And now, a man who campaigned against Barack Obama in all 57 states, Mark Galar. Welcome to the Tea Party Power Hour. My name is Mark Galar, and my special guest today is Doug Vogt. Doug Vogt holds the record for all-time listenership on my program. If you take the collective listenership on one particular show on Blog Talk, the entire time it's been on the air, it's only a little more than that one particular show that Doug did with me. So just trying to keep everything in perspective here for any Obots that might be listening. Doug, welcome back to the show. Great listenership the last time you were on, and it's an absolute honor to have you back on. Thank you. <laughs> I'm blushing. I, I think the reason why you had so many hits is because I actually gave the audience meat and potatoes. In other words, I went through all the points of forgery that I had found to that point. I found additional ones since then, but I think that's why people really want information. So I think you wanted to know what I'm doing currently or what the filing is. Yeah, you've got some legal action going on, and we can talk about the additional anomalies that you found in just a second, but kind of sure. update my listeners and me on everything that you've got going from a litigation standpoint with regard to the birth certificate. It's Real simple. When I was doing the research for the for the case and also for the book that Paul and I are doing, I read most of Chapter 18 in the Federal Code, which is the criminal part. Mm -hmm. And I came across two laws. One is misprision of felony, and the other one is misprision of treason. And they were both signed into law by the very first Congress, second session, and signed by none other than President George Washington. So there's no debate about what the founding fathers intended with the law because they're the ones who wrote it and signed it. The purpose of it is this. If you know of a crime against the United States, this is a federal issue, then you're supposed to report it. And both laws give a sequence of people who you're supposed to notify. And in the affidavit, we wind up giving, repeating the law, both laws, and in both that says a United States judge, which is now called a federal judge. It tells you the sequence. You're supposed to report it. Now, this law, over the last 200 and some odd years, has mostly been used by U.S. attorneys, and of course, states have the same kind of law they've passed in their own legislatures, a similar law, that basically, they go after someone who knows of a crime, but doesn't report it, and and someone, a lady earlier today, sent me three examples of most recently one in Florida and a couple other places of people who were arrested and, and charged and put into in prison for over a year for not reporting a crime. And it's used currently and it's used all the time. It's used as a way to force someone who knows something about it to give the information or spend three years in prison or a fine and, and or both. Doug, if I can yeah. interrupt for just a second, I want to throw a hypothetical example out at you. For instance, yeah. let's say that I work somewhere within the Department of Health in Hawaii. And if you listen to any of the verbiage coming out of the Department of Health in Hawaii, what you hear is them bending over backwards to try to imply that the document is authentic while leaving themselves illegal out. Out of Hawaii, what we continue to hear is that the long-form birth certificate posted at whitehouse.gov contains information that is supported by documents in our files. So if they know that what they're posting at whitehouse.gov is not what is in the files and that they know this thing is a forgery, they would be guilty of one of these two crimes that you've just described to my listeners, correct? Uh, that is correct. It is a felony in Hawaii as well as in uh, U.S. code, but the crime is basically against the United States, not really against mm -hmm. Hawaii. But yes, you're right. They'd be guilty of no less than misprision of felony, but really it's really misprision of treason because they allowed a foreign agent to become president of the United States, and that's, that's what nails them to the wall. And, and there's no statute of limitations. Whenever a crime has a death sentence associated with it, there is no statute of limitations. Since there is one for misprision of treason, there is no statute of limitations for any of those involved in this conspiracy to get this foreign agent in as president. It doesn't matter if, it, if they were involved 20 or 30 years ago, they could be nailed if they're tracked down. The, what's more important about what I've done and what, mm -hmm. why I filed it this way. We got an answer back. Oh, by the way, if, if people go on to the web, we have a new website for this stuff. Besides, we have one that is vectorpub.com, and the one we created for just this is called Obama Forgery Book 
www.ghostbusters.com, and I have all the pleadings. In fact, I scanned in my affidavit and the exhibits in grayscale, so you don't have to see it in black and white. You can actually see see something, and you can see the detail. It won't be in color. You've got to pay for that because, of course, I'm going to print out a color one. But you can see all the evidence and all the proof. There's 20 points of forgery in it. Now, back to the significance of this case. Mm -hmm. It appears I'm the first person in the United States that has filed anything under those two laws, ever. That's why, if you read the, the response we got back from the judge, it was most likely written by his, his law clerks, because it's the lamest thing. It, it doesn't answer what my filing is. My filing is merely under those two laws, and I'm just asking, and we gave him a sheet for release, releasing me from criminal liability under those two laws. But I've formally notified the court, just like exactly as the law says, that I'm released from my liability because I reported it. They acted as if I'm suing somebody, and they're asking me if I have standing, which is the stupidest thing on the planet. It's like saying you, you can't report a crime unless you have standing. <laughs> now you see how dumb it is? If they let it stand, if they had made a ruling like that, it means every person who is in jail now, because they were convicted on misprision of felony or misprision of treason, could come back and say, I didn't have standing, therefore I should be released from prison. That's crazy. It, I know. Now you understand the position they're in. Now, on the, the website, ObamaForgeryBook.com, if you go to the, you know, the first page, you go down towards the bottom, and I have all the, the filings. A very important one is the Memorandum of Law. In there, we, had, we cited some cases of grand juries. The point being is this is the ultimate hot potato for a judge. This is why. If he signs the, the document and he releases me from liability, in essence, indirectly, he has already done that by, by acknowledging and answering the filing. But if he, if he signs it, it means he recognizes a crime was committed, and now he gets the hot potato because he has to wind up putting in the grand jury. If you read his, his uh, filing, his, his answer, it, it says generally the one who brings things to a grand jury is a U.S. attorney. That's true. But he left out one part, and that's maybe why to use the word generally, is that the federal judge also has that right. In fact, it's incorporated in the very law it says. When it says you're supposed to tell a judge, it means the judge has the right to bring it to trial, that he can put it into a grand jury. That's the whole point. And so he's then stuck. If he, if he acknowledge a crime, and this is this things. If the crime goes to the level of in the public interest, which is some of the things we cited, we're going to be citing more, and we're responding to him next week sometime. Then he's forced to, because if he doesn't, he can only he can almost be construed as an accessory after the fact. If you read the federal statute, what an accessory is, if you prevent something from being some guilty party from being prosecuted or bringing it to trial, you're also guilty of being an accessory after the fact. He doesn't want to go there, but here he's got the ultimate hot potato. They didn't answer any of the questions regarding the facts I laid out. There was a public affidavit, which amounted to over 17, almost 18,000 words, 72 pages. And there's a sealed one that's 48 pages and a little over 12,000 words. It's now that's the one that names the forger, correct? And other people involved in the conspiracy. And the public one obviously lists already NBC and Savannah Guthrie, sweet woman, and, and others who we believe lied when they said they felt a seal. And, and people haven't heard it before. The reason why this happened with Savannah Guthrie and NBC is General Electric owned NBC and General Electric owns a division called GE Capital. They basically fund and lease their equipment, big installations, dams and things like that, generators. And they also got into the uh, loan business of housing. And they were stuck with no less than $340 billion dollars in unproducing paper. Bad loans. They appealed to the administration. This is back in, I think, 2008. And they appealed to the administration. At first, they were turned down by the because they, they couldn't take part in the TARP thing. So the administration made a deal with them. And they let them, they broke the rules, and they let them basically sell $340 billion in bad paper to FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Your S&Ls and your banks have to pay 
into there, so the insurance policy. It means, so you know, you understand what's happened. Oh, they only had to pay $2.3 billion for this insurance policy. So that means if you figure there's a 310 million U.S. citizens, not illegals, that comes out to $1,129 per person. Whether you're a baby or an old adult, you help get GE out of hot water. That's what you did. Now, don't you feel good about doing that, don't you? What, what happened is that the deal was Obama basically bought two networks, NBC and MSNBC. And that's why MSNBC is like Pravda and Azestia rolled up into one. That's what happened. They bought them lock, stock, and microphone, and that's why. So here this fairly unknown lawyer, reporter, whatever, she's the only one who's allowed to see it. And it's only because during the news conference, which is on VectorPub.com, on the page that's for the Obama stuff. You can click on it. On the bottom of that, that second page, you'll see the entire news conference. One of the newsmen said, will any of us see it, see the thing? And some people laughed in the audience. So it means some people knew it was a fraud. And they said, no, and we're not going to. And then someone asked them, Are, is the president going to see this thing? They said, no, we're not going to leave it here for them to see also. That's called plausible deniability in case you're wondering. Oh, yeah. The last thing on that news conference was, was about, was there a seal on it? Because the reporters' copy did not have a seal on it, and that's what killed it. That's what killed it for them. And, and they knew they had to get somebody who said there was a seal. So what they did is they got Savannah Guthrie to go there, and what we believe is lie that she felt a seal. But I nailed her to the wall. We did the experiments and everything like that. We have legitimate ones of eight or nine samples. And we did copies of a copy and, and a black and white copier. You can still see it because an embossed seal basically breaks the paper. You can see it. It leaves marks. So we, you see it in color. You see it in black and white. You cannot see it at all in the copy of the copy whatsoever. There wasn't any seal on it. I've seen some of the criticism that has been thrown your way regarding your comment that Savannah Guthrie was the only one to see it. And I want to make this correction for a certain obot who might be listening right now. I'm the only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.